uh, primarily around the CTO role. But tell us in Prelix, now that the two companies have merged, what is your fundamental role and value that you're providing in the merger? Go ahead, please. Yeah, so the, the title is Chief Scientist. But what, what that basically means is, is I run a team that focuses specifically on the threat. So the Advanced Threat Research Division is a team that really tries to understand how more capable threat actors are evolving. So understanding how the threat works enables us to better put intelligence into our products. And the APG function, the Advanced Programs Group, does something similar, but we provide services to some of the more um, larger clients out there, providing them contextual threat details in order to be able to understand what's happening in the threat scape. So it, it's very much kind of threat actor focused. Uh, thanks. So are you saying now the role is more a customer focus? You get the feedback faster, get a better feel of what's happening in the field. Is that how it is for you? So in part, absolutely. You know, we run the operational team that drives insights. So what we're able to do is we're actually able to track threat campaigns at any time. So I don't know if you've seen, but for example, on Twitter every week, I'll post details about new threat campaigns. And so, for example, we were dealing with the issue that impacted the Ukraine. And by understanding, hey, you know, really by understanding what the threat actors are doing, we're able to track if there are any other countries impacted. And actually, what, what I can tell you is, is that we know that we've seen indicators associated with Whispergate in India, for example. And of course, that allows us to understand that these threat actors aren't just focused on one country, but actually focusing on other nations as well. Okay, great. Uh, very interesting. So let's look at uh, Trellix now. Now, obviously, when you brought the two companies together, there was a, there was a purpose and you were looking at the strengths of each and obviously the market pain point. So, so give us an idea of how these three things connect. One is the individual strengths of McAfee, FireEye, and what are the principal pain points that you had planned to address once the merger was done? Go ahead, please. Yeah, so, you know, I think from a pain point perspective, for most people, that, that would be fairly, I guess, obvious, really, because you know, every single day we're hearing about more companies that are being impacted, whether it's companies that are being attacked by ransomware or nation states carrying out espionage. And so we're seeing a level of capability from threat actors improve and the impact to society is really quite significant. I mean, you know, we've seen and we've heard, I mean, for example, we've seen espionage campaigns taking in intellectual property or confidential information from organizations. We're seeing ransomware hold businesses literally hostage and, and the demands for payment have gone from 300 to you know, tens of millions of dollars. So, you know, the, the biggest pain point that I think we can argue, and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be macro about it, and uh, sorry, micro about it and say it's ransomware or something else, but just all of the above. We're, we're dealing with a threat environment that is increasing its capability and increasing the impact to society. And, you know, the, the number one thing that we need to kind of re remain focused on is our attention to customers. And, you know, for me, from a from a, from a from a threat perspective and from a from the chief scientist perspective, we've got this opportunity to be able to kind of really garner and gather the data that we have from from FireEye and the data that we have from McAfee Enterprise, and really provide a a unique view. I would argue because it is a unique view. You know, the biggest strength we have is the customer base that we that, have, that we have out there, and so by having that level, that having that purview provides us the opportunity to be able to understand quicker and faster what's going on, but equally, I think more importantly, determine and develop intelligence and technologies that can go into our products. Uh, interesting, but there's the other aspect other than the threat landscape, there's the other aspect of the challenges inside the security organization, the challenge that CISOs face. So how does Trillic uh, tackle, for example, the, the challenges of too much complexity or the uh, continuous focus on point products and things like that. Go ahead. So, so, and, and that's a great point. I mean, you know, 35% of security analysts ignore a lot of the alerts that come in. And so one of the things that we, we look to try to incorporate is context. And by that, what I mean is, you know, the, the biggest challenge organizations face, which is, is this something that I need to respond to, which is, you know, there's a lot of noise. And so, you know, tools like Insights will be able to say, hey, look, 
you know, this particular ransomware group is something you need to be concerned about because we're seeing it in, for example, in India, or we're seeing it in your sector. More importantly, we provide the ability to actively hunt within the environment. So organizations can immediately determine whether we've seen any indicators of malicious activity from a specific threat actor. So a lot of what we're trying to do today is really provide that context so that organizations can be really make the decision about, okay, well, which are the alerts that I need to focus on or which are the campaigns that I need to focus on or which threat group should I be concerned about? As opposed to, I clearly can't do all of this. There's just too much, you know, too much noise out there. And so I think, you know, if we, if, if, if I was to say what's the, the biggest benefit that I think we're able to provide, a lot of it comes down with the ability to, yes, of course, detect, but more importantly, provide the context in order to be able to have a better response. Another challenge that CIOs are grappling with are the pressure from business to you know, change the whole architecture towards a digitally transformed thing. Does Trendix help the CISO to manage this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the great thing is, is that we, we do bring a very broad portfolio. We bring a lot of partners and, you know, a lot of what we talk about with regards to XDR begins with extended. So the ability to be able to gather um, data and, and, and information from a multitude of various different you know, platforms and systems and so forth. So actually, I think the fact that we're bringing the partner ecosystem from both McAfee Enterprise and FireEye probably gives us that ability to do that. And so, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the premise of all of this is with regards to XDR begins with the X. Okay, interesting. And just to, to close the, the aspect about McAfee and FireEye, I'd asked you about the strengths that each one brings to Trellix. So other than the customer base, any other significant points that we need to know about what McAfee has brought in and FireEye has brought in? Go ahead. So, so actually, you know, and, and I'll always answer this question the same way, which is, you know, ultimately it comes down to people. Ultimately, it comes down to the talent. And, you know, one of the things that I think, or actually probably the main thing for me, is our opportunity to collaborate with you know, people that we perceived as our, as our competitors, but now we're working and collaborating together. And so I think, for me, the important part is the ability for us to be able to integrate as, as a single company with a single mission and a single purpose. And beyond the technology, ultimately, yeah, it's those people that are driving the company forward. Okay, a very interesting point over there. Let's go forward. Now, when Trellix was launched, one of the key things, key themes which came out was about living security and the ability for the Trellix solution, whether it's XDR or something, to continuously learn. Can you explain uh, in more detail what this is in terms of the product and in terms of the data and other things? How does it actually learn about the security challenges of an individual organization? Go ahead, Raj. Yeah, so, so I mean, I'll give you my perspective. You know, my, perspe my perspective of living security is, you know, not having something that's static, not a point in time. The way that my team and the way that ATR have always worked is we've always really embedded ourselves with regards to how threat actors are working. And so, you know, two weeks ago, we published a piece of research called Operation Graphite. Now, this was a nation state group, we believe, that were targeting defense, uh, and, and sorry, government entities, specifically with regards to extracting you know, data related to you know, probably the most sensitive information a nation has. And what we saw within that particular threat was really a use of novel techniques in order to compromise their victims. And for me, when we talk about living security, it is having that understanding of how capable threat actors are developing and how capable threat actors are using malicious content in order to compromise organizations. And you know what, what we do is when with regards to that is that intelligence feeds our machine learning models, that intelligence feeds our intelligence that goes into our products, you know, everything that we do, like it's that sharp tip of the spear, is understanding exactly how, you know, what needs to be done in lieu of the fact that actually we're dealing with threat actors that are well-resourced, well-funded, and extre extremely capable. And give us an idea about XDR now. Uh, as you, you mentioned at the beginning, the extension, the extended detection and response, but what is at the core of this? Is it an algorithm? Is it multiple algorithms? Is it a huge database? Is it a huge data lake? 
what is the basic structure that powers this? Go ahead. Uh, so ultimately, you know, whether it's XDR, whether it's, you know, whether it's, well, any product, any solution, what drives, what drives protection, what drives us is our ability to be able to understand the data within a specific given environment, whether that, and, and it's not just binary, like, you know, historically, we always used to be quite, quite, quite binary, it was either bad or it was good. But actually, nowadays, we can't just think of things as bad and good because there's so much kind of in between, which is what we don't know. And so uh, it's our ability to be able to understand, you know, the, the the DNA of that data, where it's come from. Have we seen it before? Have we seen it in any other environment before? Uh, you know, does the source code of that particular, you know, threat reveal anything? Do the infrastructure reveal anything? And it's really getting that wider and broader understanding of the context in order to be able to make better decisions about what to do with something. I mean, you know, if, if we rely upon, I, I guess, static kind of classification, which is good or bad, there's going to be so much in the, in between that actually this, this, the, the, the security analysts are going to be overwhelmed. So what we want to try to be able to do is have that, that purview of everything happening inside an environment and, and really piece it together and say, OK, this is what we know. Now it's now we can give you enough information to be able to make a, a, a good or a better decision than, than, than anything that we've ever been able to do before. Okay, uh, let's look at the product development cycle. So previously, you would have a, a huge amount of you know code and you would have this thing about signature matching and things like that. And uh, there were some basic structures of any security product. I get the impression now that things have changed that you actually have to, as you mentioned about contextual, you need to maintain a contextual uh, pointing algorithm, you need to maintain, you need to have your threat intelligence and you need to have the product. Is it is it becoming, uh, is product development changing uh, because of these these factors? Go ahead. Well, so so product development, I mean, I guess what you're referring to is, is content development. So the ability to be able to develop content in order to be able to put inside the products. I mean, that's always moving. That's always changing. I guess, you know, when we talk about living security, that's kind of the best example of it, because, you know, the, th the bad guys and girls aren't, aren't changing, aren't stopping. They are, they are improving. And that's, you know, that's as much a challenge as it is kind of intellectually stimulating as well, because we, we, we are, you know, there is this kind of this, this, this game of cat and mouse, whereby they're constantly improving, we're constantly improving. And, you know, for me, the, 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 the premise about content development is something that never stands still. It's always, always moving. And we, we've always got to remain, you know, that bit ahead of, of what the threat actors are doing. And so, yeah, content development has changed and it continues to change and it continues to evolve. And, you know, the one, you know, the one thing that we do have, actually, when we, when we, when we merge the two companies is, you know, we've got a really kind of very rich patent portfolio. And that patent portfolio is something that we can lean upon on both sides of the house. Okay, great. So as a customer, when I, if I, if I uh, engage with Trellix, what does the product portfolio look like uh, today? Is it, is it fully ready or is it still in development? And XDR sits here. What else is there in this whole thing? Like, you know, some vendors, they say, okay, here's the threat intelligence part. Here's the solution part, and here's how you need to make the whole thing work together. In your case, how is it actually so? I mean, how is it presented to the CIS? So go ahead. Yeah, so, and, and that's a great question. And I think, you know, one of the things that we're trying to move away from is coming to you and saying, well, we have a point product. And there's some, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with point products. There are out companies out there that are doing some very, very good things in specific areas. The benefit that we have within within FireEye and McAfee is we've got a pretty comprehensive portfolio, and more importantly, we've got a really comprehensive partner, you know, directory and a, you know, a number of partners that we work with. And so, whether you're you know whether you're in the ICS space, the industrial control system space, and you're looking for a partner to secure an OT environment, whether you're you know a a small to medium sized business looking to you know just secure one small component of your business. The good thing is, is that we're a security company and we've got a number of security partners. And so, you know, for me, the important thing is, is that we say, you come and talk to us and actually 
will be able to work with you and develop a solution that helps you protect your environment and your assets rather than just saying well you know these are the 27 products and these are the acronyms for all of them which quite frankly you know i don't like i don't think we can think like that from a security perspective anymore we've got to think more broadly which is okay well what are you trying to achieve what's the business trying to do what's the level of risk that you're willing to tolerate and what security solutions do you need and by the way that's not just what products do you need but actually what assistance do you need to implement? What assistance do you need to 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 manage that? Um, and and also like to test out the security of the infrastructure. And, and and the good thing is, is I think, with the partners that we have, and with the with the kind of combined FireEye and McAfee, we are a solution security solution provider. Interesting. We'll come back to the partner program. That's quite an important part. But I just want to ask one more thing. Uh, does the structure of Trellix, I mean, the way you made it now, uh, fit in with certain vertical market segments? I mean, are there sweet spots where it fits in well, or is it still uh, agnostic? It fits in across all the market segments. What's the current position? Yeah, so I think there are some sectors that have a level of uniqueness about them. And you know, we, we, we have people here that are specific specialists. So, for example, my background is in in the ICS space, I wrote a book about the subject. Um, you know, my background is healthcare. You know, we've got so so. The good news is is that we do have people that have industry experience across multiple verticals. There are some verticals that are going to be more, you know, more specific about some of the requirements that they have or some of the challenges that they have. And so we've got teams that work closely with, you know, standards bodies or regulatory bodies to ensure that when we come and speak to people or when we develop solutions for companies that actually we have something that is fit for purpose because i don't think we can say yes you know here is a you know, here is a one size fits all for every organization you know every organization has specific demands and requirements and actually themselves will have different different risk appetites so how much risk they're willing to tolerate and of course that will influence the type of solutions that they'll need Okay, interesting that you mentioned about ICS. So uh, quite a few of the industrial organizations, of course, have enterprises have understood about the importance of bringing the OT and IT together. Uh, does the Trellix look at this reality where, let's say, a gateway comes in and then you have data moving across? Is it actually built to function as some of the other ICS solutions or that's still work in progress? Well, yeah, I mean... I Personally speaking, I think, you know, having a degree of segmentation is imperative. It always has been. But we, we have to acknowledge the fact that businesses today, you know, are looking for ways to kind of erode this air gap. And even if they have an air gap, those that those air gaps are kind of eroded anyway, just by by shadow IT, for example. <laughs> so speaking personally, I'd love to have more segmentation, but we have to accept the fact that actually businesses want you know that that segmented network kind of almost eroded you know absolutely there are there are a thousand ways that we can do a thousand but there's many ways that we can do this you know for example yes we can segment yes we can use things like data diodes yes we can have kind of you know virtualized networks that kind of sit in between the in between two and you know when we've worked with companies we've we've, we've developed solutions that have been you know all of the above i mean there are some companies who've said we absolutely want to maintain segmentation. Others that have said, well, we don't. And so we've had to, and brownfield sites and greenfield sites become different as well. You know, where we have the luxury to be able to develop a true greenfield opportunity, then we can start with a blank piece of play, paper. Where we don't, then of course, we have to try and figure out how we can maintain you know, operations and availability of key systems while implementing a security system. So, yeah, you know, I think I think ultimately, we're not here to kind of mandate it has to be done a certain way, but we're there to support organizations and provide them with a solution that will suit their requirements. Okay, great. Understood on, on the ICS side. Let's go to the to the channel partner thing. One of the one of the points I happened to notice was that uh, Telix, the solution, can help the MSP models of channel partners. In, in which way can the MSP business be enhanced with the Telix offering? Go ahead. So, look, fundamentally, you, you know, we are going to be, well, we are one of the largest dedicated cybersecurity companies out there. 
but you know actually i i want to be careful not to say the largest because i'm sure somebody might point me out but i believe you know certainly one of the largest out there but ultimately you know we we are absolutely dependent on our partners i mean it is our we've continued to rely upon our partners and we will continue to rely upon our partners they will ultimately have tremendous relationships with their customers and so in turn one of the things that we do is we 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 look to provide enablement to our partners as best we can you know myself i sp i speak at our partner summit regularly provide them with details of you know the latest threats the latest campaigns what threat actors are doing but more importantly how our products and solutions actually protect against that and you know today for example we published an advisory on redline info stealer where we walk people through this is what you need to do to protect against this new threat um next week i believe we've got bad cat ransomware which is a fairly new piece of ransomware it was written in in um actually i can't remember what it's written in i think it might be i can't remember the language it's written in but we know that it's fairly capable we know it's fairly sophisticated and so we're providing guidance to not just our customers but also our partners so that they can enable their customers as well and for me a lot of this comes down to the fact that you know we talk about trusted advisors and of course you know, we want to be the trusted advisor but equally by extension of that our partners are trusted advisors to their part to their customers so enabling them to be successful is in our best interest okay got that now uh, just uh, to go back to the point you mentioned that obviously with merger of the two companies creating a, a big uh, partner ecosystem any plans to uh, uh, rationalize that partner uh, i mean you had one partner program for mcafee and fire is the a partner program for the net company already in place any anything which you would like to tell us about that partner program go ahead yeah so i've got no specifics on the partner program or or specifics around some of these things i mean obviously it's fairly new right now with regards to the integration but you know again i i can only stress here that you know working with our partners is is absolutely of paramount import, importance to us so you know our focus on our partners will absolutely not going will not go away with regards to specifics around you know uh, and uh, maybe that's a question for adam i guess because i you know i don't i i'm not sure of the specifics but I, i can tell you that it is it is working with our partners is still absolutely critical for us okay fantastic raj i think it looks it looks great i especially like some of the the takeaways that you pointed out about about the the complete uh, the coming together of the two companies the best of people and the best of you know minds coming together to create felix as it is so i guess looks like a, a pretty exciting space uh, in the next couple of months and years thank you so much for your time and it was lovely to see you again thanks a lot raj